Alright folks, welcome back to the driveway engineer or the prepper engineer or whatever the hell we're calling it today. Um, today I'm working on a gasifier and if you don't know, gasifier technology goes back like 100, 150 years. Um, a lot of the early internal combustion engines were designed to run on wood gas or corn gas or whatever. Uh, the, the basic premise is that you're basically refining your own fuel. And you're doing it from, in my case, wood, okay? So by getting the wood hot, you release the molecular bonds and it releases hydrogen and carbon and methane and different gases, some of which are actually usable in an internal combustion engine. Um, it's also, you can make charcoal doing this. So I did this before. i wait for the hot rod. Um, I did this originally with this little piece of brake line that I already had and it kind of worked. I, was a, I wasn't able to get a sustainable flame though. But I did learn a few things. Um, this particular gasifier is as basic as it gets. It's really just proof of concept to show you guys how it works because I need to work through these kinds of things myself in order to understand it before I go build a big one that actually can run an engine. Um, so what I have is a gallon paint can. I hole sawed a hole in it for a draw and so I can feed fuel into it. I drilled a couple holes in it for, this is TIG uh, filler rod down in here, whatever, just to hold this little pint paint can up. Um, so I'm going to build a fire in here and I'm going to place just wood in here, right? And we're going to burn it without the charcoal. And when it gets hot enough, it'll release the molecular bonds and we'll start to see smoke out of here and you'll actually be able to ignite that. At some point you'll get to creating what they call syngas and it'll actually be able to make a sustainable flame. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up here so you guys can watch and uh, build a little fire and we'll get started. So I'm just going to start this with a bunch of junk mail, wad it up nice and tight, drop her in there, these junk circulars are actually a decent uh, source of fuel and I took a piece of pallet wood that my wife has for some reason and I cut it up into little chunks. Chop towel. Uh, we'll throw some of this in there. Try to get a bed of coals going. I found the last time, I'll insert the footage from when I tried to do it with this little thing. I I didn't let it run long enough. I didn't let it get hot enough. I, I made a few mistakes, but we'll try to avoid those this time. Okay, so now that I have a decent little fire roaring along in there and some decent coals down inside there, um, I filled my smaller bucket up with some little chunks of wood. I'll probably take this big one out. I didn't get too sciency with this. Um, there's just little chunks of wood. Um, this is 3 8 like normal water pipe and that black stuff is uh, furnace cement to try to kind of keep it airtight-ish. Um, so I'll go ahead, pop the lid on there, try to kind of push it down. It does need to be pretty airtight. Um, and then we'll drop the whole thing on the fire. That is not how I wanted that to go. There we go. All right, so right away you see it starts smoking. Um, but you can't light this.
it blew back through. Um, so you can't light that smoke, you gotta wait a little longer. So we'll give it a few minutes, I'll pound that lid back on and we'll go from there. Okay, it hasn't been very long, maybe like a minute. I was just looking at Facebook, but she's chooching right along now. It's almost there. You can see it's definitely flammable. If I get the pipe good and hot, it'll uh, ignite it as it comes out, but it's not self-sustaining yet. And we're looking for a sustainable flame, so I'll give it a couple more minutes. So we got it, sort of. I believe that it's not really cooling off sufficiently to uh, condense down like it should, but I definitely get how it works. I understand how it works and I can make it happen again. Um, and some of you might be saying, you know, why bother with this? Like, why do this? Well. Being able to sustainably, like I'm in Michigan, I can, there's trees everywhere. I can always go get more of the of wood to be able to keep doing this, right? Um, trying to buy 15 kilowatts worth of solar panels and, and the batteries, you know, to keep them running on gray days like today. It's not really sustainable to run your whole home. But I can easily upscale this for a few hundred dollars, which I'll be doing now that I've 100% proven that it works. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can run your generator on this, you can run a small car on this, you can run a big car on it, who knows? Um, there's definitely options though. And having options is always a good thing. I actually have a small solar backup that I can run my camper and stuff on. Um, you know, there's natural gas right now. I can run my generator on it. I can get propane. Like, all that stuff's easy to get right now. We're probably coming out of the current hard patch. But you never know what's around the corner. So having a grasp on this kind of stuff is always good. Um, I mean, I think you guys can see that that is 100% a giant flame shooting out of there. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next phase of this. And I hope this guy had this help. I'm no expert. I just wanted to have a grasp on what I need and how to make it work. Um, so hopefully this inspires you guys to look around and see what you can do. Uh, it's a pretty doable thing. So gasification, man. Make, make your stuff run on wood. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer. See ya.